Okay, in this video, I'm going to continue on with my tutorials on electrostatics. This is video number 22, or video 4 in the subsection on the electric potential. Specifically, I'm going to do example 2 of 3, calculating the electric potential. There are a number of videos previous to this which are relevant. In video 18, I discussed the curl of the electric field. And we found that the curl of the electrostatic field was equal to zero, but it was non-zero when we were talking about electrodynamics. Video 2, I discussed the electric field. In video 1, I discussed Coulomb's law. In video 19, I introduced the electric potential. At the, at the time, it was very much a theoretical argument, as it was used in order to simplify the calculation of the electric field. It had no particular uh, physical meaning at that time. However, in video 20, I showed that the electric potential, in fact, does have a physical meaning. It is the electric potential energy per unit charge. And in video 21, I discussed the electric potential and I did one example of the first of three examples calculating the electric potential. So in this particular example, we're going to calculate the electric potential inside and outside of a uniformly charged solid sphere of radius capital R, charge density rho, and total charge small q. So in order to do that, we need to note, of course, that the electric potential is minus the integral of e dot dl, and it's integrated from infinity to a radius small r. Note that the reason we integrate from infinity is that is defined as the zero of electric potential. Now in the past I've calculated the particular electric fields for such a scenario and I've written them here. So when we're talking about small r greater than capital R, in other words we're outside the sphere, we have this particular electric field. And we're talking about small r less than capital R or when we're inside the sphere we talk about this electric field. So simply what I'm going to do is plug each of these electric fields into our formula for the electric potential and see what happens. So when small r is greater than capital R, or we're outside the sphere, we have a pretty straightforward integral, which we're not going to go through, and we get that V of r is 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0 Q over r, which is exactly what we'd expect, and in fact we have seen quite a few times already. A slightly more interesting one is when we're inside the uh, the, I suppose inside the sphere itself when small r is less than capital R. I'm going to find k as 1 over 4 pi epsilon 0. Now, in order for us to do this particular integral or this particular calculation we need to realize something. That there are in actual fact two integrals which we must compute. We must calculate the electric potential from infinity the whole way down to the start or the outside of the, uh, outside of the sphere. And then what we do is we calculate it to some particular value of small r. And we sum these two integrals. So we have two integrals here. The first integral is very similar to our previous integral over here. The only difference is the upper limit. Instead of it being, uh, instead of it being small r, it's capital R. So just this is the, the upper limit is right to the start or edge of the sphere. And then we integrate from the edge of the sphere, capital R, to whatever point we like inside the sphere, small r. Note, of course, we have this factor of small r here, and we also have a capital R to be cubed. Nonetheless, the integral is very straightforward, and I've rewritten it in the following fashion. It's just, just for a matter of convenience in many respects. So we can put it all together saying v of r is k times q multiplied by 1 over 2r outside of 3 minus small r to be squared divided by capital R to be squared. So we've calculated the electric potential both inside and outside of our uniformly charged solid sphere. The next thing I'd like to do is just confirm that E in actual fact is minus the gradient of the scalar potential. So in order to do that, we first of all look at when small r is greater than capital R, or we are outside the sphere. Now, in order to take the gradient, we note that we're, it's, it's a function of r, so we take the partial derivative with respect to small r. It's a very simple expression to manipulate, and we get k times q, 1 over r squared, r hat. And that's exactly what we had at the start. So yes, that expression does work properly so far. And then just to confirm again, when we're inside the sphere, small r less than capital R, we need to take the, the derivative, of course, with respect to small r again. Nonetheless, it's very straightforward, and we get exactly what we'd expect. So, that's all I've got to say about that. Thanks for watching. Please pass it on to your friends, subscribe to my channel, and you might also give me a comment in the comment box below.